in this holiday season, well, it's really not a holiday, but it's a Halloween season when everybody's celebrating, getting ready to celebrate Halloween, and they're looking at the costumes that they're going to wear and change into. I invite you to explore with me the subject from this passage I've entitled, Changed, Changed. Everybody just say changed real quick, changed, changed. Turn to your neighbor next to you and just tell him, tell him, I've been changed. I've been changed. Now, 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 turn to your other neighbor and t tell him he can change you too. Oh, yes, he can. As people of faith, have you ever wished you could change society around you? Have you ever wondered how can we change the world? If anybody wants evidence that a child of God can impact a secular society and change the world, change the country, change the city, change the room, look right here in this story. This woman demonstrates change made possible by Jesus Christ. He changed her heart and he changed her daily walk and her talk and she changed the room. But how did she do it? Here Simon the Pharisee invites Jesus to dinner. In fact, he invited all the other guests too except this woman. See the doctors and the lawyers and the teachers and the scribes and the scholars and the priests and the Pharisees and the philosophers all gathered together to a meal with Jesus. Everybody's name written on the guest list reclined forward in the formal ancient Jewish eating custom except this woman. They did not invite her. The Bible says she was a sinner. And when Bible writers use that expression to refer to a woman, it usually means she was a prostitute. You see, they did not invite her to the meal, but still she showed up anyway. Can you see her today? A prostitute among the Pharisees and priests, a poor woman among rich men, the powerless one among the powerful ones, the uneducated among the educated, the outcast among the accepted, the shunned among the embraced, the refused among the received, the admitted sinner among the self-righteous, the weak among the strong, a woman of shame among men of pride. But with her name not on the guest list, how dare she enter and touch Jesus' feet? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. You see, this uninvited guest sneaks into the room to be with Jesus. Look at it again. In this story, she sneaks past the front door and into the dining room of the house just to be with Jesus. She wasn't accustomed to going to no Pharisee's house, and she didn't belong there, but she went to be with Jesus. Oh, I just stopped by to tell somebody today that, my dear Christian friends, it's okay no matter where you go. You can be okay. You'll be fine as long as you're with Jesus. The songwriter said it this way, anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below, anywhere without him, dearest joys would fade. Anywhere with Jesus, I am not afraid. Anywhere, anywhere, fear, I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. And in this story, she had the nerve to show up with a sinner's bad reputation, unannounced, unexpected, and uninvited in a Pharisee's house. She knew they would not welcome or accept her there, but you know, with Jesus there, she had safety and security. Can you see her there, kneeling at the feet of Jesus? My dear Christian friends, there's no better place for a sinner to be than kneeling at the feet of Jesus. Look at this woman humbly kneeling, working, and silently weeping 
at his feet. She has no other purpose or reason for being there. Nobody else wants her there and nobody else needs her there. This woman ain't nobody in a world of religious somebodies, but she showed up just because she loved Jesus. Have you ever gone somewhere just to be with the one you loved? Not worrying about nobody else, but the one you loved? Remember how you felt like a simple, annoying tag-along, but they didn't know you came just to be with the one you loved. This woman shows up simply for the one she loves. No secondary plans, no hidden agendas, no, 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 none of that here. None of that in this passage, only a burning desire to be with Jesus. And even today in our world, millions of insignificant, poor, rejected, and outcast people enter his presence daily. Daily they tiptoe silently, secretly, and unannounced into the room through prayer and Bible study just to be with Jesus. And while some sit gossiping, pushing, and shoving, they have positioned themselves at his feet with a humble spirit, the silence of weeping tears, and a heart willing to do service. Don't make fun of the poor. Uh, don't laugh at the outcast. Don't you mock the, the reject. Don't scorn the prostitute or ridicule the weak for any of them may be at the feet of Jesus he bids us come boldly to the throne of grace where we could obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need and he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest but he invites us not just into his presence to experience change but to serve and work and cause change in the world she came into his presence to serve and bless him. He had already forgiven her, healed her, and renewed her life. According to the text, she came because she had been changed. Now she just came to serve him, show her love, and say thank you. The story says she washed our Lord's feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. And the obvious question I know somebody must be asking is, oh, but brother preacher, if she's been so changed by God, then why is she weeping? Oh, I just love your type of questions. Somebody says maybe she cried because of fear. But no, she entered a Pharisee's house, uninvited, no fear there. Somebody else says, well, maybe she cried because of pain and agony. But no, she's crouched at his feet, free of physical pain. Uh, somebody else still posits, maybe she, she cries because of shame. But she let her hair down to wipe his feet. And in this society, respectable women never let their hair down. So she has no shame. I think she cried because Jesus changed her heart. Get this picture for a moment. A bold, fearless, mobile, unashamed woman with her hair down at Jesus' feet, weeping without caring what anybody thinks of her. In other words, a woman who never went to church now cries and weeps by the feet of Christ, the head of the church. A woman who laughed at God now weeps in the presence of the Son of God. A woman who others considered the the filth of the street now washes the holy feet of Christ made filthy by the street. A woman who made love without her heart's involvement, now loving the Lord with all her heart. A woman who loved none but pleasured all, now finds pleasure in loving the one who first loved her. Jesus dramatically changed her life. What does Jesus say? The one who is forgiven much, loves much. Like all of us, Jesus forgave her much, and now she loved much. Before this, she had a corrupted view of love and money, but now she freely gave her love to Jesus, the Savior, without money, and tears of joy well up in her eyes because her heart was changed. Somebody just turn to your neighbor and tell him again, changed. Just go on, turn to your neighbor, just tell him, 
changed, changed. That's right. Jesus changed her heart. She wouldn't cry like this before because her heart was different. How did Jesus change her heart, you ask? Oh, I don't know how he did it. But didn't he say in Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I don't quite know just how he does it, but I know he promises to do it. And these tears form the evidence that he can do what he says he will do this morning. He changed her heart. And now with a changed heart, she serves Jesus. changed her and Christian friends he can change you too right here in this room the Holy Spirit can move you into the operating room of glory he can take out your old heart he can give you a new heart I almost said go on and touch somebody and tell them Jesus can change you but y'all might not want to do that. So, oh, yes, he can change you. Jesus can change anybody who comes to him. Jesus offers the only real change, the only genuine change for this world today. I called the president to offer Jesus as America's source of change, you know. He's trying to do what he can to make America great again, but he wouldn't take my call, so I just thought I'd stop by here this morning and offer you Jesus as your change source. He can change anybody, transform any church. He can fix any situation. He still works in the new heart, life-changing business today. Oh, he's a mind regulator and a temperature cooler. He's a blood pressure adjuster and a muscle relaxer. He's a body builder and a soul transformer and a spirit healer and a sin forgiver and a question answerer and a problem solver. He's a heart changer and a joy giver and a depression lifter and a hope elevator and a tear dryer. By his precious blood and sacrificial life, he changes lives today. Don't you want that change, that transformation, that new life? Well, 2,000 years ago, the devil said to Jesus, they're all mine, all of humanity, every man, woman, boy, and girl now belongs to me. But Jesus responded, over my dead body. And he shed his blood and gave his life for you and for me. Oh, my dear Christian friends, this is the gospel. And I want to be so full of Christ Jesus that even if a mosquito bites me, it flies away singing power in the blood, power in the blood, power in the blood of the Lamb. See, he not only changes you, but he saves you by his death. But then I looked and saw this woman kissing Jesus' feet. And I suddenly heard Simon the Pharisee speaking from the text, from the text, from the text. You know, every dinner luncheon with Jesus always has a Simon in the room. In case there's a Simon here at church this morning, I haven't met one since I've been here, but if, if in case there's a Simon, I just want you to know I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the Simon that's in the text, amen? He said, if this Jesus was really a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this was, that she was a sinner touching him. You know, our Jewish law forbids contact with anyone or anything that's unclean, but this Jesus lets sinners touch him. See, I didn't hear uh, their talk before she entered the room, but I heard what Simon the Pharisee said after she entered the room. And according to Simon, this woman changed the conversation in the room with a with a, with a heart change she now served and she changed the conversation in the room i do declare that whenever you serve jesus you too can change the conversation anybody so transformed by christ's love can impact society and that's all i came to say to you this day this woman changed by jesus changed the conversation by her service god's love can change anybody so you can be his his eyes, his hands, his feet in the world to change a dark society and a broken
broken planet. No matter how messed up you may be, be Christ Jesus can change you and anybody Christ changes can change the conversation. She did what the powerless in our society don't usually do. You can't just walk into the room and change the talk of dignitaries and royalty and businessmen and power brokers and lawyers and teachers and sophisticated folk. Oh, but she did it. She changed the conversation. And look at what she changed it to. We don't know what they were talking about before she entered, but now in verse 39, they talked about how Jesus lets sinners touch him. Hmm. Don't y'all just love that kind of conversation? The amazing story of how the God of the universe, pure, holy, and undefiled, allows dirty sinners like you and me to touch him. And I don't know about you, but that's all I want to do today is touch him. I know somebody wants to reach out and touch the law today. It's still true, my friends. He lets sinners sinners touch him and each time you touch him and serve him it happens again you can change the conversation in the room but how can you touch Jesus without his, his physical presence Matthew 25 40 records that Jesus will say in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and my sisters you did it to me you can reach up and touch him by serving others here below. So how can we change the world? Just touch Jesus by serving others. And every time you do that, you'll change the conversation in the room. And scribes and Pharisees are still baffled today over the behavior of Jesus. But what gives me glory this day is that 2,000 years ago, the creator of heaven and earth and this entire universe and the maker of mankind got up off his throne in glory, threw off his royal robe. He stepped down through 40 and two generations all the way down to this earth from glory, locked himself away in Mary's belly for nine months where he picked up enough flesh and blood for you and I to touch him. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He's alive in every accepting heart and he still changes lives and lets sinners touch him today. And when you touch him, you can change the conversation in the room, in your family, in your life, in your community, in the city, in your school, in your workplace, everywhere you can change the conversation. But Dr. Luke says she not only washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair, but she anointed them with oil from her alabaster box. And while Simon and his friends fussed over this woman's actions, they missed the aromatic smell of her sweet perfume. You see, by serving Jesus, she not only changed the conversation, but by serving Jesus, she changed the room itself. And I don't know what it smelled like before, but now it smelled good. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Anybody changed by God's love has a mighty power to change the world around them through service. This world still asks that million dollar question of verse 49 who is this who even forgives sins what is our final answer his name is Jesus he's alive and working in the world today living with him changes your life working with him changes the world oh does somebody want to serve Jesus today does somebody want to work for Jesus today if Jesus has forgiven you of much and change your life i invite you just stand with me and sing this song of commitment and service for him <clears throat>